the renegade mathematician here with a friendly warning this video contains a real mathematical proof so if you got the guts I would strongly recommend you follow along with a piece of paper a pencil or pen whatever and you pause the video as soon as you don't know what the hell I'm talking about so there you go proceed with caution Okay, and today we're going to go ahead and um, continue our discussion by proving the corollary uh, really to theorems 1 and proposition 1. Um, and the corollary states that every permutation can be expressed as the product of one or more transpositions. Uh, and that differs from the first two, uh, well, from the theorem number 1 and proposition number 1, because theorem number 1 has to do, uh, although it it's a statement about permutations, it says that every permutation is either the identity a, a single cycle or a product of disjoint cycles. It uh, talks about permutations being able to be written as cycles, and Proposition 1 talks about cycles being expressed as transpositions. So we're really just going to connect those two and come up with this corollary here, that every permutation can be expressed as the product of one or more transpositions. Here goes. Let P be any permutation. Okay, by theorem 1, P is either the identity, a single cycle, or the product of disjoint cycles. Okay, so let's consider those cases. If P is the identity, then P is equal to I for identity, which is then equal to this product of transpositions, or it can be written as this product of transpositions here. Okay, starting with the inside cycle, A gets mapped to B, which then gets mapped back to A. So the inside cycle maps A to B, and then the outside cycle takes B and puts it right back at A. So A goes to B, which goes back to A. So A goes to A. Likewise, B goes to A by the inside cycle, and then the outside cycle moves B right back to A. So B goes to A, goes back to B. B goes to B. So it actually takes A and B and doesn't do anything with them. Um, but that's a product of transpositions for any A and B in the set 1 through N. Okay, so now let's narrow it down. Okay, suppose A is, uh, sorry, suppose P is not the identity. Then by theorem 1, P can still be written as the product of one or more cycles, right? That's what theorem says. It's either the identity or a single cycle or a product of disjoint cycles. So if it's not the identity, then it can still be written as some product of cycles. Since by proposition 1, every cycle may be written as the product of one or more transpositions, then it follows that P may be written as the product of one or more transpositions. So what we have here is P is not the identity. Okay, well then it's a cycle or a product of cycles. Oh wait, but then all of those cycles can be written as transpositions, so therefore uh, P may be written as the product of one or more transpositions. Thus, in any case, the permutation P may be written as the product of one or more transpositions. QED. Proven. All right, moving on. <clears throat> Note, uh, we should wish to stress that, although every permutation can be written as the product of one or more transpositions, this product is not unique. It is our aim to show that for any given permutation P, no matter how P is expressed as a product of transpositions, there is either always an even number of transpositions or always an odd number of transpositions. Our next step towards this goal is the following theorem. Here's that theorem. Theorem 2. If the identity permutation, I, is expressed as a product of transpositions, then the number of transpositions in that product must be even. And this may seem obvious to you after observing the proof of the corollary we just did. Um, but that proof is going to come in the next video in this series, so stay tuned.